Well, okay, my friends, are Roger once again, and what am I talking about today? I'm talking about brains. <laughs> well, what is a brain? Well, you got one, I hope. <laughs> but brains, why do brains preserve like they do? Look at this. This is a brain. It's from a giant, giant, uh, it looks like a human to me, but I don't know. There's the eyeball, there's the f surface of the brain, but no bones. Why no bones? Why and no bones? All right, there it is. That's the same brain, and look at it. Now, that's a brain. Nobody can tell me that's not a brain. Here's the, here's the four-way right here. You see it? That's the brain, and here's where the eyeballs go, right on the side of the brain, like that. This is a brain. All right, so I don't care what you say. It's a brain. Now, there's not only that one. That one, I mean, that's a gigantic one. That's from a very large creature. Now. This is what they look like. This is the outside surface of the brain. It's not bones. And that's the trunk going down into your body. All right, you see it here? That's the outside surface of the brain. That's the trunk going down into your body. Now, what, what do we have here? That's, that's just one right here. Here's another one right here that's in spectacular shape. And this is not, this, this is not the same one. This has blood, on, you know, I was looking up to where the blood enters and so forth. But you still have the trunk and you have, the, that's the brain. So why no bones? Why no bones? Look at this one. This is opal. Opal is, is fabulous. And it only happens where there's a ton of blood. Blood is what creates all these transition metal colors. And then it opalizes as they find stability and... <laughs> Now, this is really the fascia surface. The outside surface of your brain is just there to hold your brain inside that casing. It's a, it's a gooey, rubbery substance. It's called fascia. Originally, I was going to call my work fascia facilitated fossilization because the fascia, the coating of all the organs and all that stuff, is what keeps keeps the, the fossil intact. In other words, this is a bone. All right, this is a mudstone. They call this mudstone because it is. It's basically mud, but it's a bone now, and it has found stability by attaching to other molecules within the soup of this devastating flood. And the whole reason all of these things happen, I believe, is because of salt. You say, well, what's salt got to do with it? Well, salt is a dissolver of bones. Now, they talk about this vaguely, they sort of understand it a little bit, but they're looking at it in, inside your body. The salt that you intake can give you weak bones. That's probably true, I don't know. But I can tell you what, if you soaked a bone in salty solution, heavy salts, I think it will dissolve. And that is what I'm going to do. I got some pink Himalayan salt. All right, and I got a bone. I'm going to put that in there and soak this whole thing and just leave it laying around here. I've cut it into so I can see what happens on the inside as well as the outside and some of the other little bits and pieces that attach, which are, you know, other parts of the bone. All right, that's, that's basically a whole other part of the bone. And then you've got the inside structure. Then you have the outside bone. What's going to dissolve? What's not going to dissolve? That should be interesting to find out. But you don't find bones in mud fossils. This is a goose or some kind of a waterfowl. There's no bones in there. You can't see any bones at all. I can see where the structure was. Hold on. You put a little water on things, and sometimes it, it, it shows up a little better. But you can see that's where his neck was right there. And that's where the bones would have been. There should be some bones there. They're not there because they get what's called nucleophilic substitution. There's his throat. He died laying like this. The bones have been converted into mudstone. Or sometimes they'll convert into, they call them all kinds of things. Sometimes they'll just stay looking like they're just exactly like they were when they were alive. You can't tell the difference. If I put that on a plate next to a piece of meat, you wouldn't know which one was alive and which one was dead. <laughs> All right, so we're going to, and, and then again, another thing is like lungs. You see this? This lung has been evacuated. That's a, that's a lung, and that's a big cavity of the lung. 
and and it's it's been evacuated all the blood and the structural component of the blood which is basically fascia and collagens has stayed in, in intact and i have another one over here hold on whoops give me a second give me a second all right this one here all right here we go this one here is a lung as well. I mean, this is flawless. You could almost transplant this thing. And, and that's the fascia. It's in a, a lung, they call it pleura. Because it's very dense. It's, and I can show you one. I'll show you how dense it is. You see this, how flat that is? This was all from this great flood. It was recorded everywhere. So don't tell me it, wasn't, it didn't happen. It's all just a joke. This stuff proves it. All right, this is just another little thing about salt. Excess salt affects the bones. Scientific com community always wanted to know why people who eat high salt diets are prone to developing medical problems such as kidney stones and osteoporosis, which is weak bones. And it's because the salt has, a, uh, has an effect on it. Now, inside your body, it can't be unbelievably salty. But after the Great Flood, the depths of the ocean lifted up and washed all over the world and there's going to be depressions here and there where lakes were now they're saturated with salt extremely high levels of salt because salt sinks in the ocean it gets to be a layer down there of just nothing but salt when that washed up all over the world which it did because the earth just was shaken terribly by almost getting impacted by venus and then that salt would have been all over the world and then there's going to be areas not everywhere, but there'll be areas that were extremely salty and all the bones washed away. And then we're going to see if that happens to my bone. I don't know, it could take a long time, but I'll try it. Now, let me show you something else. All right, the stuff I have has no bones to speak of. I have one I'm going to show you that has a little bit of bone left. Now, this is a lung, and it is a lung. There's no question about that. And it's been DNA tested and CAT scan and all that stuff. It's a human lung. And that happened from the flood. Now, I told you this, this pleura, this dense fascia, basically, is so thick. How can I prove it? Right there, you see it? That's how thick it is. This is another lung. You see, there's the top part of the lung. There's the little flap that invests at the bottom. Same thing. They all have the same stuff. They got that little top at the thing at the top, and they got this little flap that invests at the bottom, the lungs. So that holds it in so it doesn't go jiggling around your body. Now this is, this is dense. Look at the thickness of that stuff. This has to go like this, 24 hours a day. It's a rubber bag. And again, look at how flat it is. It's from a great flood. Let me show you one more, and then we'll get off the lung case. All right, to look at it, you may not believe it that this is a lung, but it is a lung. And these are the lobes of the lung. And it was laying here flat like this in the mud. And what will preserve bones? Mud. That's why you can see tiny little taste of bones back here. You see it? That's a bone. And it was laying like this when it died. And all the stuff washed off, you see? It eroded off eventually. And this is what the... It, it, they turned black like that inside. But that's, that's a little taste of bone left there. A couple of them here and there. Because it was sunk down in the mud and not being continuously saturated with waters that were heavy in salt. The rest of them, they just soaked in salt. All right, let's talk about what happens when the Earth was almost hit by Venus. And it wrenched the Earth, the floods covered all of the, everywhere. So what would happen? The deep waters of the ocean, necessarily, not necessarily the deep, but the whole ocean would cover everything. And here's the deal. Ocean water is 3.5% salinity, 3.5%. Now, deep water is extremely cold. It's like zero degrees. It's, it's uh, well, it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero to minus three Celsius. Now, when that water got out of its oceans, and onto the land, it would puddle into lakes and rivers and depressions. It would evaporate. It would become more and more salinity because the, the salt's not going to evaporate. The water evaporates and it becomes extremely salty. And that, I believe, is what ate into those bones and took them all away in certain areas where there was this pooling of the waters. 
Now, I am in an area where that happened. Now, I am going to try to soak this bone in this Himalayan sea salt, and we'll see what happens. It's going to take a while, so it's not going to be like overnight. So, but I'm just going to let it soak, and we'll see, you know, it could take, I don't know how long. But I'd like to see what its effect on this bone is. Not only the surface, but the inside of the bone. What happens? And what about the area where you, you have the, uh, the ball that sits on the end of the bones? I'd like to find out. I, I'm going to see what all of this stuff does. Because this is a separate entity. This is totally separate from that. It's a cap on the bone. This is, I'm finding this stuff very interesting. <laughs> now you saw the size of that brain. It's huge. This is a hair follicle. This is a hair follicle. You know how big your hair follicles are. You ever pull hair out and infected hair and you see how they got a little ball on the end? That's it. There's the hair shaft. This is where the, the erector pili muscle attaches. This, of course, is the bulb at the bottom. This is the root. And it comes, wraps right around, it comes right out through the top, which is the hair shaft. And these two little dots right here are the vein and the artery. And this, of course, is the um, sebaceous gland. That's a, a total perfect copy of it. Very strange how these things happen, and it's just literally denied by people that are doing this research and I can't understand for the life of me why they deny and refuse to examine it. I don't think that's right. See here's another one. This must have been in an extremely salty area because all of the bones are gone. The fascia is completely gone. We're down inside the alveoli here, these little tiny holes. You see them? You see these little round spots? That's the alveoli. And this, I, as far as I can determine, this part here must have been somewhere like this down into the, some muddy area that allowed it to keep the blood, because the blood stayed in this. This area, it's leached right out, it's just evaporated out, and what happened was it filled in with silicates. There was an extreme amount of silicon at this particular time too, because the outside skin layer on the human body is 50 times more silicon than inside the body and that's the stuff that eroded because it was, this was a hot water flood hot it, Venus almost impacted us with this tremendous amount of energy extremely hot all the volcanoes of earth went off the water sloshed and it combusted the atmosphere it was a disaster absolute disaster and it's a well recorded and it killed all the giants all these giant brains and all that stuff laying around giant hair follicles that's because of that flood now it's time to start looking at this with an with a actual scientific mind and a scientific eye. It's crazy to keep walking around in circles, oh, 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 we know all about this, we all know oh, that's settled science, like hell it is. I'll let you know when it's settled. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to do, I'll put a little water in here, put it up to about here, just so it's submerged, and we'll see what happens. Okay, day one of the test. Let's see what happens to this bone over the course of time. It's still floating. I don't know if it'll sink at some point, but it's still floating now. Well, let's see what happens to it after. I'll just keep an eye on it. All right. Thank you. I love you all. Let's try to figure this out with a realistic approach to this. Not just take somebody's word. Oh, no, this stuff is all silly. It's all nonsense. No. That's the nonsense, is to not do it in a scientific manner. I do things scientifically. I look for evidence. I'm a material scientist. If you can't show me something, I don't want to, you're just talking off the top of your head. I want to see the real results. I want to see the truth. And this is the truth right here in front of your face.